Wow. Wow. Did we not kind of call it last night as everybody filed in and said, Smitty, you're overreacting. Smitty, you're overreacting about Stefan Diggs. You're such a drama queen with your show, Smitty. It's just a small little comment. It triggered what you see before you. Diggs on the move. Stefan Diggs traded to the Houston Texans. The Texans received Diggs in a 2024 sixth round pick and a 25 fifth round pick. The Bills receive a 2025 second round pick via the Minnesota uh, via Minnesota Vikings on that. So this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Um, there's so much to digest. CJ Stroud to the moon. We got to redo the triple stack into a quad stack. We got to talk about Kincaid. We got to talk about what the Bills do and what rookie they bring in. We got to talk about how... Uh, good Lord, we got to talk about how Dell's affected, how Nico's affected, how everyone in this entire league is affected by this situation. Um, <laughs> the fantasy football show, breaking news edition, Stefan Diggs to the Texans edition begins right now. File on in. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. Unbelievable. This news is is like rocking fantasy football. This is probably the biggest trade we've had in, in some time in the NFL. Diggs getting traded to the Texans. The compensation's on screen. Bills receive a 2025 second round pick that was via the Vikings. The Texans um, uh, the Texans received Diggs and a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. Blockbuster trade. Pro Bowler Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans for draft pick compensation. And how many people went nuts on me last night, especially in the comments? Those comments didn't age well at all after this situation was brewing yesterday where, you know, Robert Griffin III can stir the pot and he says, is Diggs essential to Josh Allen's success? You know, and, and Diggs' comment, we knew he wouldn't be able to stay quiet comes in and, and says, you uh, when someone says, Josh Allen, uh, benefit from a top-tier wide receiver, yes. Is he essential to his success? No. Diggs goes, you sure about that? And just created a firestorm of, of tweets and Instagram posts and all that. And uh, and, and wow. I mean, we're, we're, we're here now discussing how C.J. Stroud goes from, I don't know. We, we had this graphic that we play all the time, the Stratosphere. I, I don't even know that we can play that anymore. We have the triple stack. The stack above all stacks. That's now it's time to drop. That's now become a quad stack. A quad stack. The impact to Dell. The impact to, to Nico. We're gonna talk about all that. The phone lines are open. The impact is to Stroud is obviously through the roof. This is similar to like if if Burrow got JJ. Like Chase, you'd wonder what happens. JJ, you wonder what happens. But Burrow to the freaking moon. Burrow would be to the moon, right? To the moon. Well, Stroud to the moon. Stroud's going to the freaking moon. He's got Diggs. He's got Dell. He's got Nico. There's there going to be some overreactions. There's going to be some underreactions. Uh, uh, you know, there's going to be people like Perry who don't know. No offense, Perry. But don't know ball outside of I don't know what team you're you're a fan of the Niners. Josh Allen is is now worthless. No, Josh Allen is no worthless. You mean now worthless? He's not worthless, bro, because he did almost a majority of what he did last year, half of it, without Diggs doing anything. So I, I don't think you looked into the numbers. Uh, this is a freeing move. This is a, a a cut dead weight move. Diggs was garbage the entire second half of the season. Now. To that point, we got to ask ourselves, is is Diggs going to be happy and fed well in Houston 
to not be a diva? Does he even love this situation? Probably will at, at on surface level, on his face, he probably will. But Nico and in in Nico and Dell aren't surrendering their their starting spots. Like I I think it's important to know Diggs is going to fit into that team. How is he going to react? And and I think that people are going to absolutely run away from Tank Dell, who's already in round four. He now drops to what round five or round six. He becomes one of the bigger steals in fantasy. You have to look at this from a different lens and perspective. I know people want to get mad, especially if you currently own Nico Collins, who I told you not to draft in the second round all offseason anyway. Okay, everyone was taking Nico in the middle of the second round, late second round. It was too risky, way too risky. And so anybody that drafted Nico there, you made your own bed. You shouldn't have been drafting Nico in the second round to begin with. Tank Dell was the value. Tank Dell took a little hit, but not really as big as you would think. Because Stroud has the rapport with Dell. Stroud has the rapport with Nico. Diggs is 30 years old, turning 31 this year. Diggs has already proven drop-off. People were writing him off. You know, no matter what happened with Buffalo and the situation, we didn't think he get traded. The 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 hit was too big. Do the, does the team move on? I told you the hit doesn't matter. I told you the money, the dead cap, the hit, none of it matters because at the end of the day, the team is being held back by Diggs. Um, I think the overreaction will be too harsh on Nico and Dell. I think people will run away from Nico, deservedly so because he's in the second round you need to walk away from that value anyway does that drop into round four for nico round three i don't know does Diggs go from 22 overall which is his current crazy adp to something higher or does he drop to 3.1 because he's in a crowded wide receiver room to be honest with you i don't think Diggs's value goes up in most people's minds because he's in a crowded room I think he goes down to the third round. I think Nico drops into the third, maybe fourth round. I think Dell drops into at least the fifth, maybe sixth round. And the real winner here is CJ Stroud by a mile and probably Tank Dell and, and Kincaid and Josh Allen, to be to, to be honest, because they'll replace him. They'll figure out something. They'll draft a rookie. This rookie wide, wide receiver pool is deep. And the in the in the the Buffalo Bills have the 28 overall pick, so they could go after Leggett. They could draft a very 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 crafty wide receiver. The rookie wide receiver that lands here at 28 uh, could be one of the craftiest rookie wide receivers in all of 2024 fantasy football. I'm just telling you that right now, right here, right now. But Diggs, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite interesting how he fits into this situation, and and I I think everyone's going to run away have knee-jerk reactions, and, and uh, uh, react too harshly to the Diggs and Nico Collins value drops. There, there's definitely not, there's too going to be too many overreactions, which is great. You guys all have to look at this from the perspective of this. You walk out the door, where's my underdog fantasy promo code Smitty, okay? You got to walk out the door, look, Nico and Dell have new value. So get with it. Stop complaining and crying. Slap yourself in the face. Readjust your thinking. Walk out the door. Come back in. Okay? Dell now has fifth or sixth round value. Are you going to uh, complain and cry? Or are you going to say, hey, S Smitty, this is actually good news. I can draft Dell in sixth round value. Maybe later. Nico's now going to drop who knows how far. And Stroud's going to the moon. Does Stroud even climb into round two or three? Maybe three. But he's got tremendous value right now. But the thing is, what's Diggs 100% going to prove? What's Diggs 100% going to do? We don't know. Diggs could be almost a nothing burger. Could be. I'm not saying he will. I'm not saying he doesn't have maybe one year left. But the overreactions are going to be crazy. If you already own... If you already own Nico and you own Dell at higher value than you should have paid, then it sucks. You got kicked right in the sack today. But I don't think these guys are getting their jobs replaced by a 30 turning 31-year-old wide receiver that proved he couldn't do anything at the end of the year, that proves he's an off-the-field cancer and problem, that proves he's a diva if he doesn't get the football. You think Stroud's going to move aside his two best friends in the whole wide world that he's 
push the bunk beds together for more activities. You think Stroud's just going to push aside Nico and Dell? I think this is a blessing in disguise for those that have not drafted yet. For dynasty owners of, uh, everywhere that can now go get Dell and Nico at reasonable pricing. I think this is a blessing in disguise in many ways. And overreactors everywhere are going to help us get Dell at tremendous value. The real winner is Dell, like I said, of the wide receiver room in Houston. Because he's going to be the one that's going the latest. The real true winner overall fantasy-wise is going to absolutely be uh, Stroud and Kincaid. And I think the incoming rookie is going to be unbelievable, remarkable, insane. Um, this is crazy. This is amazing. There's a lot to digest here. The phone lines are open. Let me let me put the phone line, uh, uh, t turn the phone lines on. Phone lines are open. Uh, Diggs traded to the Texans for uh, the compensation that I've read off here. I'll read it off one more time. Uh, this looks like this. Texans receive Diggs in a 24 6th round pick and a 25 5th round pick. The Bills receive a 25 2nd round pick via the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, that pick was eventually uh, sent over to Houston. Look, so this is uh, this is unbelievable. And a lot of this has to do with money. You, you know, you got to understand that, like, maybe you think, oh, okay, this compensation is okay, but Diggs could be a big difference maker. Well, there's a lot of money in the contract. That, that is involved. We talked about this last night, and and there are even a couple comments on my my Diggs video from last night saying Smitty, you're such an overreactor. What are you doing? You like <laughs> we? I mean, look, there's a reason I do what I do. There's a reason I go live whenever news breaks. There's a reason last night when I was gonna do a Josh Jacobs video, instead I diverted. I took a, a side path over to a immediate Stefan Diggs live stream because you never know when these things are going to trigger something. So last night, we went live as soon as the comments were out because we knew Diggs was quiet for a while. But the moment Diggs opens his mouth and becomes a diva, he becomes a problem. He probably already buttoned up all of the controversy. They probably said, let's, let's pipe it down. Let's go do it one more time, Diggs. And Diggs goes, all right. And Josh Allen and Diggs reportedly patched it up. But I told you, no, no, this marriage was not seen in public. It was always a compartmentalized interview here with Josh Allen only and Diggs over here with a quote. And they're like, we're fine. We're fine. But you never saw them together out in public, did you? And, and so all it took was one more comment where the Buffalo Bills were like, look, you can't obviously do this, can you? We're getting rid of you. We're getting rid of you. And Houston's receiving... A problem child Houston's receiving a soon-to-be 31 year old wide receiver that a lot of people wrote off already now granted people are wanting to give him maybe a little bit less of that write-off uh, label because he's going somewhere new and he might be motivated but he's not taking the spot of, of Nico or Dell he's not sliding one of those guys over those are the guys this is an accoutrement this is now an accessory, not the main guy. And I know a lot of people will want to say he is. Changing teams for a wide receiver is extremely difficult. It usually is. Doesn't it, it doesn't always translate well the first year. This guy doesn't have multiple years to mold and and, and get uh and, and get moved into this offense and, and, and get time to to develop and mature. Stroud's got extremely uh, intense rapport with both Nico and Dell. I think that it's it doesn't feel great on the surface level for Dell and Nico shares. But I'm telling you, this is not as bad as it may appear. And it presents a new opportunity that you can look at from a different lens. You can look at it from, a, oh, I'm just going to avoid it. That's the problem with fantasy football. And that's the angle I try to bring to the table a lot of the time. Is people will come in with the one mentality. They won't look at the new angle. They won't say, okay, I, I get it. Any league I have, Dell, any any league I have, Nico, kind of a, a nutsack kick. Like I said, kick right to the nuts, uh, the nutsack. But if you haven't drafted yet, and how many leagues have you not drafted yet? A lot. Majority. All of your best ball drafts. Maybe the early ones, you, you drafted them too early. That's fine. But all of your future best ball drafts from April 3rd on. All of your redraft leagues. The majority of your... Your startup dynasty leagues, all these drafts you're starting over from scratch, right? Or whatever, okay? You get to react from the new angle. The new angle is Dell costs you, I don't know how far down he drops, round five, six. And Dell 
is fantastic value the deeper you can get him in your draft. Uh, Travis, you're live. Hey, Smitty. Um, so the, the two big takeaways for me is, one, um, I think it's good for Allen because they're, they're probably going to get a, like you said, a wide receiver in the first. And, it, you know, just takes away that distraction and a rookie should buy in, you know, so that's good for them. And two, it just, you know, keeps pumping up what we say about the Texans. You know, they're even more Super Bowl favorites now. Um, the one thing I will say is, obviously, he's going to get his catches and stuff. But um, if you look at who ran out of the slot for the Texans last year, Robert Woods ran over half the slot routes for the Texans. So Diggs is going to go in there. And obviously, he's going to pick up catches, but he won't be taking snaps away from Dell and Nico very much. If people yeah. are worried about that. I, I just think that this is great. Like, this is one of those, those in crafty fashions, under the radar, drama filled situations that that is good for the the astute fantasy football owner and 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 again what people need to understand is it's not so much that like this is what the this is what the casual is going to say smitty this isn't actually that good a news because at the end of the day like dell is not it's not gonna he's not gonna go up right you're not paying the same price the the person the casual is gonna react oh. on yesterday's price about today's news the astute owner is gonna react on reaction yeah and, and i saw that and and i understand that the, the natural and i don't mean to call your your reaction but casual i'm just saying the casual no, no, I'm, I'm saying i reacted that way yeah at first. And then it, I looked it, into it a little more and thought about it. Yeah, it, in the nat- the natural reaction from somebody that's not looking into this deeply is just going to say, this sucks because of his current value. I'm not going near him. But at what point does the line in the sand immediately flip for Tank Dell? The line in the sand is the, 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 the thing I've coined in the industry of where a player goes from avoid, 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 the line in the sand, and they flip into a, a value. At what point does the line in the sand be presented to people that have had a negative reaction to this news and they're like, oh, Tank Dell? Well, he was in round four anyway. Now, now where does he go? Round right. five, round six? What point does he flip into a value for you? And Stroud is not replacing his two very best friends for a 31-year-old wide receiver or turns 31 this year during the season that is already proven to be a diva proven to be difficult, wants the ball or he's going to give up, and we don't even know what's left in the tank anymore because he didn't have a good second half of the season. He's also learning a new offense, and they're not going to replace Diggs or, or Nico or Dell. He's going to be an accoutrement, an additive to this offense, which could be fantastic for Stroud. Stroud definitely sees a big uptick in value. But this is crazy to me. The the overreaction, the initial overreaction is crazy. There's a lot of people saying Dell's dead, Dell's done, uh, put a fork in Dell. This no. is horrible. Like, I don't understand that at all. You're looking at it from the fourth round value, pal. You're not looking at this from the newfound, who knows where, sixth round value of Tank Dell. Maybe seven. Maybe Tank Dell falls to round seven. I don't know. The reactions make me think it's possible. It really, they really do. In in the overreactions on on Josh Allen, I saw a couple of Josh Allen's toast. Now Josh Allen's going to be bad. Give me a break. No, Josh good. Allen did what he did. Half of what he did last year, 40, uh, 50 total touchdowns. Half of what he did last year was without Diggs doing jack shit. <laughs> like, what are we talking right. about? This what, is, what are we this talking is awesome about? For for him and and Kincaid. Kincaid to the freaking move. Hold on. Let me let me show you a, a little bit of a little bit of research and science that we put together on the Kincaid situation that should describe this all very nicely. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Diggs only takes away from Schultz, says Steven. Uh, Diggs is elite, Smitty. Oh, okay, Wesley. Um, we know he's got elite talent if he's 
still playing at that level. We don't know that he is. He's also moving teams. He also isn't replacing these guys. He's also going to be an additive to the offense, not the number one wide receiver. Kincaid will be feasting. Absolutely right. Rookies. Uh, uh, whatever rookie gets drafted is going to be one attractive rookie uh, to, to pull in. Uh, let me go over to Rock Out real quick. Then I'll go over to Aurora. Then I'll go over to the Isaac. Uh, real quickly, Rock Out, what can I do for you, pal? You're live. Kincaid season, baby. Kincaid. Yeah, yeah to all, to all the overreact your hungers on on this situation, I think Kincaid can still get his value. I think Nika can still have his value. And I think as far as out of those three, I would tell him want to take a tank. And, and I think, think Josh, Josh Allen, Allen will show, show he, he, can he can be great, great even without him, and he already was. And, and I believe he'll be a, basically good for, for both, both parties. parties. Yeah. Um, okay, so l- let me re- let me read these Super Chats off real quickly and get these out of the way because I promised I'd, I'd be put, making attention to the Super Chats with the, with the immediate uh, assistance here. Two-keeper league, uh, dumb to keep Dell in the seventh round? No, I still think that's... It could, it, that's where his value could fall, like sixth, seventh round. But no, that's not dumb at all. But Luke, it would depend on your other options. I really need to know them. But no, it's not Dell. Dell in round seven is still not dumb. G Smitty, just watching your digs video from yesterday on the way home, you nailed this. We, you know, we really did. Uh, in in some people think I go live for no yeah. reason, but you know, we're not always going to predict what's going to happen either. But we go live whenever news is big enough, widespread enough, even if it's just to shoot it down. And and some of last night we said this, you know, how likely is it? We don't know. You know, there's there's a lot of lot of there's got to be a lot of negativity inside that locker room in the organization that's resulting from Diggs's comments, which we believe that that it probably did. A couple of people said Smitty, he just said a comment on social media, like big deal. It had, if you look at how widespread it was, he was the most trending uh, NFL topic on Twitter. It was causing like chaos everywhere that was going to, you know, ricochet, impact, and echo everywhere. And so they got tired of it. They said, let's move the guy. Let's get rid of the guy. Let's get rid of him. He can't keep his mouth yep. shut. And Houston, and to find a suitor was hard. Travis and I were, were looking through, combing through. I think we even mentioned Houston. We, we kind of glossed over it. We're like, nah, Nico and Dell, probably because we didn't, you know, I want to face that, that that would be complicated because it is complicated. But you when you dig into it, it's not as scary. Didn't think they'd give up a, a second round. Yeah, either. yeah. You but, didn't think they'd give that up. Right, but they're going for Plus, it. Plus, so. Houston seems like the team that doesn't want that drama. They're building something special and something that's you know youth based. But it, it's so it's a weird move. I'll say it doesn't feel characteristic of that organization and where it's headed. To be quite frank. And that's why I think but there's it, a there's it's a only ch- risk with money. Yeah, the risk is with money, but the chance of it not working out is still significantly high, because yep, this yep. is a diva that is th- turning 31, that's going to a new situation, trying to learn a new system, and the likelihood of failure there is still higher than people want to realize. Uh, what's Diggs' projected stat line in this new offense? I'll be honest, man. I don't know that he hits a thousand yards because I think Dell and Nico command that opportunity first. I I don't know that he gets ten touchdowns. This could be one of the more disappointing at the end of the day moves, even though it's the biggest offseason trade we're gonna see. The, the it's big in name, it's big in 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 theory, and it's it's big for Stroud. But it's I think it's gonna kick a lot of nut sacks where it doesn't need to be where they don't need to be kicked. The reactions are going to be crazy extreme. And this one right here, uh, Mahomes really left the city of Buffalo for dead, says Mike Jones. Uh, Appreciate all of your super chats. You guys absolutely rocking. And this one right here, you're on top of your game, Smitty, says Kyle Howard with a $10 hauler. $10 haulers get moon shots. Kyle, appreciate you. Luke, appreciate you. Mike Vick, appreciate you. Uh, Jeremy, appreciate you. And Mike Jones, appreciate all your super chats. Any other super chats, I'll handle immediately. Let me go over to Aurora real quick. Aurora, you're live. Yes, Smitty, I'll just make this quick and then I'll hang up. Uh, But this, to me, is good for every party involved. I know people have been saying it, and we have callers here that are talking about it, but... 
I just think, quite frankly, I know it's a little uncharacteristic for the Texans, but I think, one, uh, Diggs needed a new change of scenery. I think he was being a pain in the rear end to uh, Buffalo. They were sick of him. I think Josh Allen doesn't have to stroke his ego and force feed him anymore, and he's going to be fine. But I think for the Texans, this is great, too. It's not going to take – I mean, yeah, it's going to – hurt some production in terms of the offense because he's going to also get the ball. But I think ultimately this is just going to make their offense much more open vertically. So this is good for everybody. It, 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 I don't know why somebody would say somebody's losing. Yeah, yeah it's, needed it's weird because um, right now this is the way – this is this is why I bring psychology and all this to the show a lot because I, I love psychology. It's why I, I studied it. Um, the only way I u- I've ever used it is on this channel. <laughs> but but here here's what here's what I think. It is it's easy for somebody to say the glass is empty right now. You have Josh Allen, and I know they've got they've got players, Kincaid, Shakir. I, those are players, right? Everybody's not looking at them as as elite talents for whatever reason. That's fine. It, it, Kincaid is an elite talent. Shakir is good. He's not an elite talent. But right now you have an empty seat, and instead of looking at this thing from a what's that empty seat going to look like who's going to be filling that chair is it Leggett? is it malachi corley is it keon coleman uh is it going to be if you could mute real quick i just added uh rogan or whatever please mute if you could is it keon coleman is it who's it going to be in that seat once that seat is filled then cast your judgment right now everyone everyone's looking at josh allen shakir and kincaid and going what's it look like which they're not using their creativity and and looking at what is arguably one of the most talented wide receiver rookie classes we've seen in a long, long time. And at 28 overall, the Buffalo Bills are filling that seat with a player that we absolutely love. Who's to say that Brian Thomas Jr. doesn't somehow fall and the Bills trade up just a little bit to get him? Who's to say that Leggett isn't going to be one of the most remarkable rookie wide receivers after draft day because he lands in the Buffalo Bill empty empty chair. So let's let's re, let's yeah, reserve our true. let's reserve our judgment on Josh Allen's value what survives anyway and what what uh, Aurora just said is what I've been echoing for for months now is that Josh Allen drops back to pass and he's forced to make a decision, and he did this at the very tail end of the playoff game when they lost the game. He drops back, he's got a wide open digs, and he's got another receiver downfield in the end zone wide open for the win. Who's he going to trust? The guy that's crying all year long, the guy that dropped the pass earlier, the guy that's not happy when the team wins unless he catches a touchdown, or and he's got to make these decisions on the field all the time. It's dragging the team down. Cut the dead weight. Get rid of it. Now he trusts everybody, and this offense is going to get elevated. That alone is a positive for the Buffalo Bills. There's no negative here cutting dead weight on a guy that gave up on the team. Even if Diggs survives and does well in Houston, he's not that guy in Buffalo. He doesn't want to be that guy. So it's let him go, let him fly. Maybe he survives at the age of 31, which he turns this year. In this new situation, maybe he doesn't, but he doesn't do it in Buffalo. You free up money, you get rid of him, you maybe replace him, and you maybe are more apt to replace him now at 28 overall when you might not have had you kept him. So it's all going to work out. If Leggett's the guy, we love Leggett. If Leggett's the guy, boom, Leggett's better than Diggs right now the way Diggs is playing in Buffalo because Diggs doesn't want to play in Buffalo. Diggs is playing at 20% capacity. It's like it's it's a no brainer. It really is. Do you, um, yeah. do you think there's a chance if this if this IU thing gets ugly, they could make it happen for him? Yeah, you know that that's that's one thing we haven't even touched on yet, which is definitely running through my mind, and I just haven't been able to get everything. Is now now I in play. <laughs> now I use him play for Buffalo. It, it's it's a great segue into that. And, and Niner fans can be like, he's not getting traded. He's not getting traded. Everyone told me last night I'm absolutely nuts for even bringing up that Diggs could get traded. So tell me whatever you want. I could care less. 
You have no authority over this topic right now. All the anti, he's not getting traded, he's not getting traded haters out there. Because the NFL is crazy. You don't know what's going to happen. And Ayuk is making waves. Ayuk just saw another wide receiver get traded. He just watched somebody change their destiny, their trajectory, where are they going, their happiness level, their appreciation level, regardless of whether it's right or wrong or, or Diggs even had a leg to stand on. We, Ayuk has now seen another move. Ayuk has seen that a trade's possible. His agent will leverage this. His agent will eventually request a trade, in my opinion, and all the people can come back and say whether I'm right or wrong, and I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but Ayuk has one move to, to make. He doesn't have a lot of leverage in reality. Receivers under contract don't, but one of the leverage points is to request a trade to apply pressure, to make teams inquire, to get price tags, to get people to, to, to value you so that you can take that value and say, look, this is what this team's offering. Why aren't you giving me this contract? If Ayuk got traded to the Buffalo Bills, the, the way that trades work in the NFL on contract years or franchise tag players or whatever the case may be that's very similar is as soon as the trade is announced, the new deal is announced in parallel. There's no way a team's acquiring Brandon Ayuk unless they have a, a long-term deal worked out. And the reason that trade requests are so yeah. vital and important to the player is because teams willing to trade for a player are willing to overpay and pay way over what the originating team is going to pay. Because they've got to impress this player enough to get the player to agree to it all so they can execute the trade. So it's like, hey, Ayuk, we're the Buffalo Bills. We want you to come over. Uh, yeah, it's going to require this, this, and this. Okay, well, we're only going to give you that. Yeah, that's not interesting to me. And so it's it makes the trade impossible to do. They got to go above and beyond. They say, Ayuk will give you this massive deal. Ayuk says, okay. And and, and and then they offer an offer they can't. the Niners can't refuse. And then all of a sudden, a trade that doesn't seem likely ends up happening. So Ayuk to the Bills is not crazy. Um, uh, there could be the 28 pick involved as well as the draft capital earned in this. They could give up a whole lot more than the 28 okay. overall. Niner fans will think Ayuk's worth a five overall pick. He's not. He's worth at best a mid teens pick if you're lucky, and definitely, uh, definitely worth, uh, definitely worth, uh, you know, the 28. Um, but 28 and some change for Ayuk if Ayuk's frustrated and wants a new deal, certainly possible. Certainly possible. Need the money up. Yeah. 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 Smitty, I'm going to let you go because I'm at work. But I was just going to say to your point, they have a plan. Like, to, to me here, this is not just done overnight. This is also something that's been brewing for a long time. And it's just as good for Buffalo as it is Houston. So I'll let you go, buddy. Thanks. Um, sorry, I had to step real quick. Uh, Isaac, you're live. Isaac, did you did you already speak, Isaac? No, no sir. Go ahead, real quick. I might have to jump in a second. Hey, man, the drama. Yeah, go ahead. Question: The drama queen is gone. Drama queen's gone. I'm happy. I'm happy for the Bills and Josh Allen. He's probably going to play very similar. I agree that uh, Diggs is probably going to be a great compliment to the Texans. Might not get that thousand, but they're they're pretty loaded up. Um. That's about it, man. He got his way. He needed to get out of there. That, that Look, shit was just Look, this old. is the best thing that could have happened to everybody involved, as was said earlier on the phone line as well, is, is Stroud goes up. There's no way this affects Stroud in a bad way. Stroud could only go up. Nico and Dell become more affordable, especially Dell. Uh, Diggs gets an opportunity. Will he, does he even have the value and talent left? I don't know. But this is a good situation. Buffalo now can trust their wide receiver room. Josh Allen can move on. This is a very, very good opportunity for everybody involved. And Leggett or whatever wide receiver, whether it's a trade for Ayuk, uh, whether it's it's tr tr you know taking a Leggett or a, a Keon Coleman or whoever at 28, this presents an opportunity for a new up-and-coming wide receiver. Kincaid's value to the moon. At the end of the day, this is what needed to happen. And I think it's going to be a, a fantastic uh, situation all around. Yeah, one more, one more thing. You said it was it was a big name trade, and I agree with that. But I think everybody can just take a deep breath, and move move that on. Yeah, and, and Higgins, good point. Breeze says uh, Higgins, um, he could be a Buffalo Bill as well. 
I mean, cer certainly possible. H Higgins or or Ayuk could be a Buffalo Bill. That might be the live stream we do later today, where we say, okay, are Higgins in in, in are Higgins or Ayuk going to Buffalo? That might be the title of a, a live stream here in a little bit, because that that's the next that's the next topic. Is it a rookie? Is it Higgins? Is it Ayuk? What wide receiver one is in Buffalo in 2024? That's probably the next live stream. Um, all right, hey, uh, Isaac, uh, uh, rock out. Uh, Rogan, did you talk yet, Rogan? No, okay, not yet. Okay, go ahead real quick. Yeah, so what do you think? you think there's going to be too many cooks in the kitchen for Houston? First question. Uh, I, I mean, if Diggs was his like old with self. The ego of Stephon, with the ego of Stephon Diggs. And the and the newness of Nico and Tank coming into their own, and Stroud just just getting into his second year. I mean, that's something to be to think about. Well, there, there might be too many cooks in the I, kitchen. I think I think that the expectation level is going to be ultra high for Diggs, even if it's a little lesser than in Buffalo. Like Buffalo, he had 22 overall ADP. I think it could drop to like the top of three. But I think that expectation is still too high. I think this is the third wide receiver in the wide receiver room. I think Nico and Dell have their place in this offense and have their place in rapport, rapport wise with Stroud it isn't going anywhere. Um, the end of the day, Diggs has got to fit in or he's not going to fit in. It's it's up to him. He's not taking the place of anybody. He's not nudging anybody out. This is a situation where I think he's going to be remotivated. How long he stays motivated, I don't know. Moving wide receiver rooms, moving teams is not easy for a wide receiver. It usually is is a difficult first year move, and he doesn't have the luxury of time to get used to it. It's it's one year. He's got one year. This is if he's lucky, he plays well this year, and that's really that's really it. He fades away. He becomes uh, Michael Thomas in a way. He becomes Julio Jones. You know, as those guys faded away, that's where he's at. He's 31 years old. You know, this year he turns 31. So. A lot of people said he already got washed. Like, how is it an issue anymore? If people think he was washed in Buffalo, why all of a sudden is he not washed anymore? I'm not I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he can't do well for one year, but he's certainly not just gonna take the place of Nico and 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 uh and Tank Dell. He, I, it, so could it complicate things a little bit? Could it create drama in the locker room? Is this a situation where like he gets cut by the Texans midway through the season. Who the hell knows? Like, he's yeah, capable yeah, of that. Yeah. He is capable of creating that kind of environment. I, that's why I don't understand the move from a fit standpoint for the Texans, to be honest with you. But I think it, it helps Stroud too much. And it, it helps us buy in at Nico and Dell at reasonable prices to the point where I kind of like it. I'm, I'm intrigued by Dell's value more than ever. And I don't think a lot of people are going to look at it from that angle yet. It'll take a little while. I've been noticing a lot of people in three drafts have been taking uh, Nico above Dell. Well, that, of course. That. Of Is course. That Nico's going in round. Why? He's got a second round ADP. Dell's got a fourth round ADP. We've been talking about that all offseason. Dell at cost at fourth round value has been way better than Nico at second. I've been screaming, stay away from Tank Dell. In this, or I'm sorry, stay, draft Tank Dell, I've been saying, in the round four. And stay away from Nico in round two. It's way too risky. It's way too high. And now those people are pissed yeah. off. But you shouldn't have drafted Nico in the second round anyway. So, um, I, it's crazy to me. Yeah. yeah. Do you, what do you think about Mahomes versus Stroud? I, I'm talking with some of my fantasy people. Would you take? Let's say you're taking the third round quarterback. Are you taking Mahomes over Stroud at this point? Or are you taking Stroud over Mahomes? I, I'm still taking Mahomes. Don't split it. I'm just saying if you had one team. I'm still taking, taking Mahomes over Stroud barely, but it's definitely debatable. And maybe like a, a couple days from now I change my mind, honestly. I, I'm still digesting the move and how much I think Diggs will help. I don't think Diggs will hurt as much as people think. I just don't know how much he'll help yet. I, I gotta figure that out. We gotta see his mindset. How excited is he? Is he gonna is he gonna start dropping negative comments toward the Texans? I don't know. He Diggs yeah. feels very Antonio Brown. Um, I think that someone even put that right here. Next Antonio Brown, he might ruin the locker room. Yeah, exactly, Devo. I didn't even read that comment yet. I just remember seeing Antonio Brown somewhere. I agree with this comment. I, I, I really think there's a possibility that, that like I said, is it, I wouldn't put it past Diggs to get cut <laughs> mid-season. Although I wouldn't put it past Diggs to, to just reset his mind, play well for half a season or a season, and then kind of fizzle away. Uh, Diggs sucks. 
What does this do for Dell's value? So we addressed that already. It's fantastic. He goes to round six, maybe. Maybe later. Maybe Dell's around six or seven, and that's fantastic value. LOL, uh, I, oh, so much for the comments yesterday telling you to stop overreacting on Diggs because he actually just trolling. I know, everybody was in my comments. <laughs> well, that's crazy, man. Thank you, Call Your Boy Loud. Appreciate hoping, your super chat. Thank you, Devo. Thank you, Terry. I'm hoping this 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 takes down Josh Allen's value a little bit to the it eyes will. of the public so I can... Uh, it will. Yeah? It, yeah, it, it, it definitely... Already in my fantasy. It definitely my will. fantasy group chat, they're like, we're taking Jalen over Josh. I'm like, yeah. please do that. Please, and, 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 you know, comments like Jaylen this, and Der- Derek, I, it's understandable. I'm not I'm not ripping on you, but comments like this will help a lot in terms of, like, man, you're going to get steel, a steal in Tank Dell. This messes up Nico and Tank in Dynasty if you have them. I don't think so. Dynasty's not that effective, bro. Uh, if Diggs does have a, 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 a value left, it's like a half a year to a year. So Dynasty is unaffected. If anything, Dynasty, you could go buy right now. We'll probably do a Dynasty show tonight on buy Tank Dell, buy Nico, <laughs> and do it now. Um, buy Josh Allen. Josh Allen, Tank Dell, Nico, buy him now, Dynasty. That show is coming tonight. I can almost guarantee it because these reactions. Are you taking Josh over Jalen in a draft? Uh, Josh Allen. Uh, right now, I, I think I still am. Look, look. What what did Diggs what did Diggs help Josh Allen with last year? At the end of the year. At the end Nothing. of the year. Nothing. What and, and did Josh Allen have one of his best years ever? Yes. What do you have? Fifty total combined touchdowns by the end of the year, and and got nothing out of Diggs the second half of the season. I'm not worried about this at all. Not to mention everybody keeps judging Josh Allen and the Bills with an empty chair. That wide receiver room is going to have that chair filled with Leggett or Keon Coleman or Ayuk or Higgins. Like, let's take a breath. Every, every, and I'm not saying any of you on the phone line, but let's take a breath. The wide receiver room is not going to be empty walking into the season. Like, what if Ayuk gets traded there tomorrow or today? Is everybody coming right back into this live stream that said, what happens to Josh Allen? What happens to Josh Allen? 12 hours later, how you feel? Like, everybody needs to relax. Josh Allen will be fine. Josh Allen will get his receiver. You know? You think that you think that they can draft McConkey? I think that'd be a McConkie, um, uh yeah. Uh, 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 Parasol, there's a lot of options. But Leggett feels like the guy. Leggett, like, uh, Leggett feels so? like it would be amazing. I, I love the idea of Leggett. Okay. Brian Thomas Jr. would be fantastic. So they have to trade up a little bit to mm-hmm. get him. But who knows how far he falls. Higgins in a trade makes sense. Um, I, I don't. I, I, Higgins felt lost last year, but maybe it's because they didn't have Burrow. I mean, that's well, H- Higgins still Burrow, but. he stepped in at times last year. So, but but like I'm I'm not super high on Higgins anyway. But Ayuk, I, I look Ayuk. Everyone thinks Ayuk can't get yeah. traded. Same people said Diggs wasn't get traded. So what do they know? This is crazy. Are you taking Ayuk over Debo? Uh, depends where he is. Well, I'm just saying, if they're there at the same round, you know, four, pro- four pro- rounds, probably probably I you this there. year, but by a hair. All right, hey boys, I gotta go. I'll be back okay, later. Thanks. Appreciate you on the phone line, Travis. Any final words? Uh, rock out. Any final thir- words? Um, I was just gonna say quick that the uh, his dead cap was only from eighteen and a half drop to that, and, and that's his salary too, and it already guaranteed for the season. Yeah. So. Yep. Whether they cut him, keep him, anything, it's all the same. Yeah, at this, this year, yeah, at this point, it's already the risk is lower than people think. Yeah, that's the way. That's why it makes sense to do it at this point in the in the game. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of people that are gonna. Uh, this is gonna hurt us bad, says King. I don't know what King's referring to. Us, who, what team you're talking about? Um, but if you think that this is the Bills, it's not. It's not going to hurt the Bills bad. Let me go to Perps real quick, and then I got to jump. Uh, Perps, you got about 30 seconds because I'm running out the door here. Perps, live on the on the phone line. What's up, Perps? Hit me with it. Perps? Oh, he's not there. All right. Hey, Travis and, and Rock Out, Rock Out, you got anything else? No, I'll let you Okay, yeah, c- call back in. We'll be we'll be hitting this later um, uh, at some point again because we're going to be talking about Higgins. We'll be, we're going to be talking about Ayuk and talking about, like, what rookie. That'll probably be the next live stream, and it probably won't be that that far away. All right, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Perps, dial in again. Uh, insane. Insane trade. If for those just joining, make sure you rewatch the show. We've got a lot of information to unpack here for you. 
2025 second round pick via the Vikings. That pick was sent to the Buffalo Bills in exchange for Diggs, a 2024 sixth round pick and a 25 fifth round pick. Uh, call back again real quick, uh, Perps. Uh, I'll wait for Perps to dial in real quick so he can get his, his two cents in. T. Higgins to Buffalo, maybe. Ayuk to Buffalo, maybe. Rookie wide receiver to Buffalo at 28 or trade up maybe to get a wide receiver, maybe. Um, we haven't even talked about Odunze. Like, what, what if the Bills said, let's trade 28 in a future pick. Let's go get our new stuff on Diggs. That could happen, too. Um, Brian Thomas Jr., trading up for him. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, uh, uh, Leggett. These are all options, all very good wide receivers. Keon Coleman could be good as well. This, this is this is one of the, the most uh, talented wide receiver classes, rookie wide receiver classes out there. Uh, Perps, I, I, I waited for you. Per Perps, call into the next show. I'm out of here. Appreciate you all. I'll see you all later. Rewatch the show if you missed it. Live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday through Friday, live whenever big news breaks. Um, we got uh, over five, 400 and something of you in here from YouTube. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the thumb up button on the way out the door. And uh, all you on Twitter, make sure you get on over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the fantasy football show. We go live when big news breaks. We always go live. Hold on. Perps is calling in real quickly. Uh, per Perps, what's up, my guy? Perps. This was a cancer in Buffalo. Perps. He was a cancer in Minnesota, and oh. he's going to continue to be a cancer wherever he goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think people are overreacting about Dell and Nico. It's going to be crazy, man. It, it pre presents a great opportunity for people that are in the business of acquiring Dell and Nico in trade. It presents an opportunity, especially in Dynasty, and it presents an opportunity for people to go draft Dell. I believe Dell, the most valuable um, wide receiver there at cost. He's going to be a sixth or seventh round pick, so it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. I mean, CJ's already got chemistry with those two guys. Yeah. And he's not going to throw that away. No. Um, no. You know, you look at Dell and the how, how well he did last year. I mean, Diggs has been declining anyways. As a wide receiver, and Josh Allen didn't even have faith in him. He wasn't even throwing on the ball. This would be like if this show acquired Skip Bayless, and he came over as a, a an analyst here on the Fantasy Football Show. Is, is everybody going to stop watching the main show? I don't think so. He uh, Bayless would just be a name. <laughs> he just, no, I agree. He, he'd just be a side piece. Uh, I, it, it's Diggs is Diggs is not taking. Dell and Nico's place. It comes down to does Stroud even beef up his passing numbers enough and mature? People aren't even accounting for him to get better. If Stroud gets better and throws for more yardage and touchdowns, there's room to give Diggs his 800, 900, and, and seven. But D Diggs is not getting 1,400 yards and 12, 15 touchdowns. Dell and Nico are still the guys. Maybe it waters down their numbers a little bit, maybe it doesn't. But their adjusted ADPs will account for that at, at a bare minimum. Um, Axe, real quickly, Axe, and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go over to uh, Purpose for the final thought. But Axe, you got 30 seconds, and I got to get out of here. All I want to say is I'm real excited for CJ Stroud. I Atta think boy. he benefits the most out of it. Of course, the Kincaid as well. Kincaid benefits a lot too. And, and quite yeah, honestly, Josh Allen benefits more than people know. <laughs> more than people know. People don't realize how much this is good for Josh Allen because the Bills are going to replace the wide receiver. It's not like the Bills are going to sit on their hands and have an empty chair. Everyone's judging Josh Allen with an empty wide receiver chair right now. As if they're not going to go attempt to get Higgins, go attempt to get Ayuk, or draft A.D. Mitchell, Leggett, or, or trade up for Brian Thomas Jr., or even trade up for a Dunze. You don't know what the Buffalo Bills have in store. They, they, they have had an elite wide receiver for a while. It's not like they go without one, right? Diggs has been there for a while. Who knows if they say, we want, we want to go get a, a Dunze. We think a Dunze is the number one wide receiver in the league in a year from now. Let's go get him. If a Dunze went to, and this has been a dream spot of mine for a Dunze. If a Dunze somehow ends up in Buffalo through a trade up into a high pick, <laughs> he's going to be a top five wide receiver. So we'll right, see. Correct. We'll see what happens. All right. Hey, Axe, appreciate you. Uh, final thoughts, Perps. Yes, final thoughts, Perps. Yeah, I think this is an overreaction. But, I mean, obviously, Buffalo fans or Diggs fans or, you know, 
going to be happy and, you know, be after him. But I don't think this changes anything for the Texans. If anything, yeah. it puts another guy out on the field to run her out and, you know, take away a, a back on him and open up Dell and uh, Nico for other options. But yeah. I don't see Diggs excelling here. Yeah. All right. Hey, Perps, appreciate you. Come back on the next live stream. We'll be talking about Hig. Probably the next one's going to be titled like Ayuk or Higgins to Buffalo. Like, you know, let's have this conversation. All right, Perps, appreciate you. Yep, I'll be back. First day off in 12, so I'll Atta be back boy. tonight. Attaboy. All right, thanks, Perps. Appreciate you. Uh, Terry Roberts in the building with the Super Chat. $5 hauler. Terry Roberts says, Derek Lincoln, I agree with you 100%. Digs to Houston is going to be a, a diva like James Harden. Thank you, Terry, for dropping that that super chat. Thank you guys all for the super chats. Uh, Mike Johnson, Jeremy, Michael Vick, uh, Luke, uh, Kyle Howard, Terry Roberts, Devo, Call Your Boy Loud, Terry Roberts, all dropping super chats. You guys are all monsters. Appreciate you supporting the channel, keeping the lights on. We're live whenever big news breaks. We always do it that way. That's the way Dad did it. It's the way America does it, and it's worked out well so far. I'll see you all on the next live stream, live whenever news breaks and live at 8 p.m. every single Monday through Friday. No one does it like we do. No one goes live more than we do. No one does live breaking news like we do. Who else walks into their studio, fires up everything when big news breaks and does a YouTube live stream? The answer is nobody. The answer is just Smitty and you guys. We all come together. This is a community. Become a part of the community. If for whatever reason you found us today and you're like, what is this channel? It's a channel that goes live whenever big news breaks. That's what it is. See you all. Later, appreciate you. Look at him. Look at him. We got to add digs to this, I guess. We'll see you all later. Appreciate every single one of you. Unbelievable. 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 What a live stream. See you all here soon.